Lineman, hot and sweaty, physical? Yeah, we need these. Uh, you got to push through. That's it's, football's not supposed to be easy. You got to grind through days, and that was one of those days. We've been blessed with good weather, and you find out guys who want to work, guys who want to compete in days like this when it's not easy. How much uh, you pay attention to competition at the other spots on the old line, and uh, you curious yourself to see how some of that plays out? Yeah, um, you see guys competing, and as a leader of this group, I'm just trying to help guys and help them do their best out there and, and make them be their be at, at their best when they're out there when it's called. Because it's not easy. We have good players on the other side of the ball. So you got to know, hey, you're blocking Jeff, you're blocking Harold, you're blocking uh, Tart inside. You have guys that you got to go out and you got to man up on. And we have guys out there busting it every day. And you know you don't want to get a certain amount of opportunities to show what you can do. And, you gotta, and when your opportunity is called, you got to answer. Has it changed things for you when they go from a big guy like Roger beside you at left guard to a smaller guy like Aaron at left guard? Uh, I'm comfortable with anybody. I, Brewer played a lot of games with me on both sides last year um, with Nate and Roger being out for a handful of games. So Brewer's played well, Jamarco, all those guys that came in and done well for us. And they've really, you, you can tell how hard they're working over there and what it means to them because they, they want to earn that spot. And to be a part of something, you want to be able to block for a guy like 2-2 in the backfield. And they know the opportunity we have before them. Offensive line, defensive line, one on ones. Pass guy rush. Might, yeah, guy may gain a little ground, yeah. but it's not necessarily moving the quarterback right. off the yeah. spot. Definitely, um, as an interior guy, you're trying to um, hold the depth of the pocket. Edge guys, you're trying to widthen them, um, widen them, and hey, have an edge so Tannehill can step up. So we have we have techniques and stuff, but yeah, it's you're working out there. That's gonna be the hardest block for you because they know it's passed, so it makes third down and stuff like that easier because they don't know the scheme. So you, it's definitely hard for us, and they got to work too. Do they, do they declare winner, loser when you're watching film? or how, Yeah, that? when we're watching film, they, you, you, they're definitely going to critique you. Hey, you need to replace your hands. You need to work on your punch here. Hey, this guy beats you. You can, you can tell. as If you've been in the league for this long, as an older guy, I know when I win and lose a rep. But a young guy, you can be like, hey, you need to get a little more depth on this guy. You need to hold the anchor quicker. So they definitely, you're getting coached up on all those reps. Taylor talked yesterday about your relationship with him and how lucky you guys are to be on the same old line and in the same unit for so long. What does your relationship with him bring to that group and the cohesiveness uh, in your eyes? Yeah, I, I know what Taylor's going to bring, um, his energy, um, what he brings to the field and his demeanor. Um, he's a guy who loves uh, love playing this game. He's a guy who's going to be high effort. He's going to play hard. And we've been together, so I know when his highs and his lows are. And he knows when I need a little bump and when I need to say, hey, chill. He's a guy I can push. He's a guy, no matter how the game's going, I can look out there and tell him, hey, I need to pick it up or we need to, hey, we got to keep this going. And no, no matter if I holler at him or praise him, he's going to keep that same attitude with me. Has he learned Has he learned to take your your input that way? I, like maybe early in his career, was he not as open to it? Uh, I think it was learned. Um, he sees uh, what I put in the thing, how much it means to for me to win and be a part of this unit. And it took time. And he's a guy I trust. He's a guy that... Hey, he knows I'm going to be out there on Sundays. He knows I'm going to try to be the leader and try to, because it comes down to him, I want to win. And no matter what it takes, no matter how pretty it is, um, I'm going to do what it takes to get that win for us. Then last year when there was some, you know, injuries and, you know, guys were coming in and out of the lineup, uh, that kind of year, a whole new season, is there any bleed over that you guys can, that can maybe help as you guys go into this season? Yeah, um, you had guys like Dylan get an opportunity to play last year as a rookie. You had uh, Brewer stepped in a lot for us and played. So you had guys not just coming in their first year and not playing their first snap. Um, but yeah, you playing with multiple guys, and that's what our group does. You see how we rotate in with different guys throughout practice. And during the season, you never, and walkthroughs and everything, they're putting different guys beside me at all times. So when on Sundays, I'm comfortable. You dream of maybe having a season where the same five guys start and finish everything? That would be great. Uh, but. I enjoy it. I love seeing guys get their opportunity. That's how I got my opportunity. Guys get hurt. Um, guys get banged up. Um, you you want to see guys cherish uh, those opportunities. And when they get them, you want to see their dreams come to it. Because this, this, this league's not easy. And guys earn a great living doing this. And you want to see guys be able to take care of their families and make it. What's your, uh, what's your overall confidence level in the online right now, having lost Roger? Yeah. Um, camp is about earning your um, – earning it every day. Um, if you come out the first day whooping everybody, um, it's hard to come back every day and do that. So it's, it's little things. You're working on the details each day. But Roger is a great run blocker. He's a guy who was a physical guy who's done it. He's played in the, he's played in Super Bowl. Um, he's a guy you could lead on. He always had great energy. But we have other guys. Um, this 
you never know. This could be my last snap out there on the field, somebody beside you. So the next guy's always got to be ready. Um, but Roger was a great guy, great teammate, and love Roger to death. Would you, uh, would you like for the uh, first team old line to get a couple series on Thursday just to get a feel for it, or are you good? Um, whatever they want. Um, I trust Rabel and his decision, and he's done a heck of a job um, through the years of preparing us. And he knows when we're ready and when we're not. And he knows how to put his foot down when he needs us to, hey, we got to have a good day. Um, he's a great leader, and he's a guy that we trust, and he's a guy we want to work for. What's it like, the preseason games, if you guys don't play, you play a little bit, you spend yeah. most of the time with the football cap on watching. What, what's, what's game day like in the preseason watching some of these guys your teammates with play? Anytime you're on that field, um, it's got to be special to you. Um, because anytime you're putting something, it's something, it's something on tape, all 30, uh, 31 other teams are watching, it's your resume. So if you go out there and you're not taking it serious, you're not going out there and putting your best, other teams see that. So if I'm on that field, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my best. And that's what it's about. If you're not out there fully locked in, no matter if it's a series, two series, a half, when you're out there, you got to be totally locked in because that's when guys earn spots and that's when you make the team. you enjoy watching the young guys play uh, when you guys are out um, and the young guys are there competing? Absolutely. I remember my first couple years in the league when I had to play every snap in those preseason games from the first series to the last, um, seeing the vets, how in tune they were to help you, hey, bringing guys along, cheering for you because they're getting excited for guys who's, who's earning their spot. And you can see guys edging forward at the end of the third game back then, third and fourth game back in the old days. And it's fun seeing guys make an opportunity and seeing it, it click for them. It's like, hey, guys, I'm kind of figuring it out because no matter if it's a preseason game or a regular season game, you're playing in the NFL is special. You've earned it. You've worked here. And it's an opportunity guys will remember for their life. Ben, as an offensive line unit, you guys struggled a little bit out of the gate last year. What do yeah. you think the key is to starting quicker this year and, and getting off on the right foot? Yeah, well, we got to come together. And we were banged up early. And we didn't get to work a lot together. But no matter when our bezels called, we got to an answer. Um, and definitely that first week, we were not ready. Um, we didn't, when our bell was called, we didn't answer last year. And hopefully this year, we, we check a box and it's not just going out there and you, we got to be focused and every game special in this league and anybody can whoop you. And another thing Taylor said yesterday was the sense of urgency within the room of, you know, we got to get Derek Yards now, we got to protect Ryan now. What does that look like when you guys are in the film room, when you guys are on the field? How do you feel that sense of urgency among the group? Yeah, um, we have a guy, we have, we're trying to, every day our job is to be able to run the ball good. We know any team that are going to come in and try to stop the run, we got Derrick Henry in the backfield. And a guy like Tanner Hill, we, we got him hit too many times last year. And we know when we protect him and give him time, he makes plays for us. He's a guy who's our leader and executes and puts us in the right play. So we don't want him. We want to do everything we can to protect that guy. competition been like with the receivers on a day-to-day -day basis and how much do you guys improve maybe from what takes place on the practice field? Uh, I mean the competition is great you know uh, we got different receivers you know as far as like you know they got size you got some that got uh, some speed quicks so I feel like we're getting some great work you know from them guys you know they're making plays we're making plays and uh, you know I feel like we're, we're heading in the right direction you know with both the, the receivers and the DBs. and probably helps you down the line? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, the harder it is out there for us, like the conditions, uh, the better it's going to make us in the long run. That's how we look at it, you know. So it was a tough day. You know, we had to fight mentally with the heat, you know, full pass, short yardage, all, all that, you know, running through your mind. But, you know, it only makes you tougher, you know, for the game situation, game like situations. Down there, how does that feel to see your teammates, and how do you celebrate them when that happens? That's we we feel, we love like, close the game out. You know, uh, it's a great feeling, uh, and that's how we want to have it. You know, we want to make sure that we as a defense, you know, close the game out and uh, get a ball back to the offense, so they can, uh, you know, just really get in victory formation. So it's big for us. You know, we want to be perfect in those situations, two minute situations. Like I said, it's, it's the in the game. So uh, it was big to see that. It's very encouraging, and we just got to build off that. I know you probably talk inside the building a lot too, but after practices, what, what are you guys discussing to try to maybe help each other get better? Uh, just, you know, what, we, what we're seeing on the field, you know, obviously I'm studying him while I'm on the field. As the player's going on, he's studying me. He's trying to learn my tendencies. So we just talk about those things, um, you know, ways that he can defeat, you know, if I'm pressed or if I'm off, you know, I kind of give him pointers. Uh, not that I want him to use it on me, but, you know, just for him to keep it in the back of his mind, you know, to help him out in the long run. Seen him improve and maybe take another step in year two. 
I feel like you you always are going to take that next step. You know, heading to year two, you got the uh, you got the NFL kind of under your belt. You have the feel of it, so uh, you're comfortable. Um, you know the offense. Um, so that once you got that locked in, you know uh, you just playing football really. And uh, he's worked on his techniques and small details of his routes. You know that's uh, helped him. You know improve for this season. Yeah, uh, he's competing, you know, like I said, we want to have a competitive room. And um, it's very encouraging, you know, to see that he can come in, you know, and uh, make those plays, you know, uh, coming from the SEC, you know, you're going against the top guys already, but uh, you got to take the next step. And it's encouraging to see him take that step so early, you know, and we just want to, you know, keep pushing him, you know, and um, seeing him improve through the preseason into the season. How things kind of change and or ramp up knowing you guys, you know, have your first preseason game in a couple of I mean, it's here, season here. You know, I don't, I really don't care if it's preseason or regular season. You know, we're out there as a defense. And like I said, our mentality is to shut everybody down. You know, uh, we want to do our job and we want to um, make get, make a good impression on our first impression out there come Thursday, you know, when we're out there. No matter who's out there, uh, we know what our mentality is as a defense. Robert, was, Robert Woods was saying that, you know, even though it's a preseason game, it's important. You know, to win it, because yeah, you're facts. competing and they're keeping score. You feel the same way. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Uh, if you're a competitor, you always going to win. And um, that's our job out here, to win. And um, like I said, we're going to go out there and compete. No matter who's out there, everybody's fighting for a job. So um, no matter where you end up, you know, this you got to put good stuff on tape. And that should be everybody's mindset. How much are more interceptions for you personally a goal this mm -hmm. year? I mean, for right or wrong, DBs get, you know, those numbers attract attention, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, for sure. Um, it's all about just doing my job. I, I do my job, you know, uh, those plays will come. Uh, I'm not trying to force it. Um, I just got to make sure, you know, I'm on point with all my keys. And once I'm on point with my keys, uh, we just playing football and we got to make the play. Chris, I know you come into the league with an expectation for yourself. Has that kind of grown over the years to now, you know, your third year, kind of proving yourself in the league a little bit for what you're expecting of yourself this year? Yeah, definitely. Like I said, um, you know, you come into the NFL, you know, you're looking to uh, figure it out. And like I said, with racing, you know, once you come into year two, you kind of have a feel for the offense, you know, how the uh, organization works and, you know, how everything runs, run, is run around here. And then, you know, once you get a feel, game time experience, you know, you know what you can do. And it's all about taking that next step, elevating. How can you get better? Because uh, guys are watching you too. So, um, you know, they're going to study you. So it's all about, you know, knowing yourself and, you know, knowing the guy you're going against. That's how you take that next step. Off season and maybe the spare time you spend studying up on what you're going to face this fall, receivers, teams, and has that been full go since the season ended? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I mean, I study other guys, other DBs too, not just receivers. You know, uh, just to learn from them. You know, guys who are proven in this league and to just find new techniques and study the receivers. You know, what routes they like to run, where they're lining up. Uh, that's all key. Not pattern yourself up after, but kind of have watched their technique, how they play, and, and try to put it into your game? Uh, uh, just to name a few, you know, I watched a couple uh, Xavier Howard, um, you know, Darius Slay, um, you know, Jair, just to name a few of those guys. You know, I feel like those guys have proven in this league, you know, to be dominant uh, DBs, and they have a long career, uh, you know, that they've played so far. So uh, I just try to watch those guys and see what I could take, you know, from their game. that as a, a negative or a positive for this team? Uh, I see it as a positive. Uh, we're going to turn everything to a positive. Uh, some guys may not have the experience, but that's what we're out here for. We, we're going to treat every day like a game. You know, you treat every day like a game, you're going to be prepared for the game. And that's our mindset going forward. Uh, Christian, a lot of receivers change teams this year. Uh, do, do you worry about uh, monitoring, looking at some film of some of those guys that you'll face, or you just leave that until uh, game week? Um, yeah, I mean, I still will study those receivers about their change teams, and I, they're not going to change their route craft or nothing like that. So you still got to study, you know, the receiver, you know, to see what routes he like, uh, you know, how he's attacking the ball, all those things. But uh, you also, you know, got to watch, you know, the uh, the uh, offense coordinator who's, you know, what team he's on now, you know, to uh, understand the offense and what they might want to use him, you know, things like that. I mean, I know you're just going into your third year, but to see this many receivers, you know, it's almost like they, they spun the room and it's, mm -hmm. it's scattered all over the league almost. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's part of the business, you know. Um, guys are going to move around, um, and that's just part of it. You know, I'm not really worried about where whoever is, but, you know, I just got to be focused and locked in, you know, on who I'm seeing that week. 
uh, with a guy like Jeff going, Big Jeff, going into his fourth year, uh, is the challenge trying to, you know, improve across the entire board, maybe just hone in on certain aspects of a, of a defensive tackles game? And what are you expecting, hoping for out of him in his fourth year? Well, I mean, I think some of those things are, are good to probably ask him. I'm sure he's thinking about some things that he'd like to work on. And, you know, from a coaching perspective, I think that, you know, when you look at D Lyman and Jeff, you know, specifically just looking at, you know, recognition, you know, I think as he continues to study more and understand, you know, what offenses are going to do and the different blocks that he's going to face and um, how they may try to take him out of games if he's, you know, as disruptive. You sure? Um, yeah, you can sit down. Go ahead, Tara. Tara, I'm moving. Um, you know how how he's going to have to handle those things. How how he functions with the with the guys around him and how he works with them. I think you know pass rush and how he can affect the quarterback is something that you know we'll always continue to try to work on. How did you feel about the defense today, just kind of as a whole, and their ability to start creating a few more turnovers and live reps and win some of the one on one? Um, well, I mean, I think, you know, you know, when you affect the part of affecting a quarterback is, you know, tipping passes and, you know, one was tipped there and, you know, it's just funny that, you know, the DBs were working that drill and ball disruption was working the tip ball drill, uh, where it kind of gets redirected and it, it changes its path. And, you know, sometimes you have to adjust to them. And it was just kind of funny that that's the one we got today was one of them, uh, in that situation. So those, those are good that we're being able to translate that work that we had in um, some of the individual drills that carry over. Um, you know, it's going to be the same thing. You know, there's going to be some good plays and bad plays and, and hopefully the ones that uh, we can eliminate the ones that get us beat. You know, we gave, you know, came back and gave up a shot. So, yeah, we got an interception on one play and then, and then gave up a big play on the next. So, um, you know, that's why we're out here practicing. Is that a clear winner in pass rush one-on-one? -on -one? How do you kind of judge, judge a snap there? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that just, you know, offensive linemen staying inside out, whether they're punching and not get overextended, you know, where are they at the top of the pocket? Um, you know, are they still able to stay square and not, not give up a, you know, a late rush back inside, you know, trying to run them by the pocket? Um, is the defensive lineman, you know, staying relatively in his rush lane and is he trying to collapse the pocket if he's not winning quickly? Um, you know, and then we ask him to, to, to sprint through the line. Um, that's kind of how it is in the, just the one-on-one -on -one pass rush. With this being, you know, yeah, the Thursday game, does it kind of switch as far as, like, some game planning? Or, like, how do you go about getting your guys in the best position to make the plays that you want them to make? Uh, those will be opportunity for some of the young guys to, to go out and play, you know, and try to earn some more reps. I think we're at that point now. I told them that, you know, everybody's going to have an opportunity to play in the game. Uh, but then going forward, we got to make sure that, you know, we're earning everything that we get and we're not just handing things out. So, you know, we'll use that as an evaluation. Um, we'll try to give them a, you know, somewhat of a scouting report, but we're still in training camp and, you know, we'll just give them some information before the game and try to, you know, make sure that they're they're able to go out and function. You had a lot of red zone periods the last week or so. How do you feel like those are going from a competitive competitive? Well, I mean, it's competitive. I think it can be better. There's some things that, you know, when offense wins the snap, you know, Somebody's going to probably have a better play than somebody else, either the offense or the defense. So, just making sure that we're sound and we're staying up, and um, you know, some of these are new plays offensively, some things that we're trying out. You know, defensively, we'll have to, we'll certainly have to be great when you get the ball down in there inside the five yard line. It's not what it used to be in this league, but how important is Tory Carter to what you're planning to do on offense this year? Well, I mean, you know, Tory's we're, we're trying to find different roles for him and. You know, see where he can fit offensively, whether that's in the backfield, um, you know, on the line of scrimmage, special teams. So there's, there's, he's trying to define a role here as we work our way through training camp. He got sort of an old school mindset, though, in terms of. Well, he certainly he has a physical uh, nature to him that that I appreciate. He has an energy and, and certainly loves football. John Woods was saying that you know these preseason games it's important to try and win them. I mean, it's obviously important to Baltimore to win like. 20-some in a row. Do you share that philosophy in terms of? Well, we just try to do anything that, you know, we feel like is best for the football team. I think, um, you know, we, we be guys that play in the game. There'll be guys that don't. 
uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to coach to win and, and play to win, but, um, you know, I don't know how much we'll run. And, I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, I just think, you know, we're, we'll make sure we'll go out there and it's a great opportunity for evaluation. We're always going to try to win. Um, but, you know, if the rotation calls for somebody else to go in or somebody's got a certain number of snaps that I want them to play, um, you know, they're going to come out of the game and, and at that point. Uh, had an interception the other day, made a goal line stop down here. How's he done as far as being around the football and kind of showing up as an undrafted guy? Well, I mean, Dr. Gibby is, is smart. He's uh, picked up the defense extremely well. He's you know, going to be fun to watch playing the game. He just gets everybody lined up. He knows exactly what to do, can help other guys. Um, you know, he's always around the football, and that's kind of what we saw you know, last year watching him at Minnesota. Difference drill inside, helping him with his hands. Uh, can you tell us anything about what that entailed? Well, it, that that's a product that uh, you know, when coaching at Ohio State, you know, you only get to work with the guys so much. I guess when the whatever the rules were back in you know 2010 or 11. Uh, so we tried to come up with something. Anthony, Anthony Schlegel came up with something that you could put on a weight room uh, rack. Uh, for for blow delivery and um, you know it's been a product that we've used since you know he came up with it and we had talked about trying to put something together and he's really made it a passion to try to promote that and we think it's important it's just a you know it's an apparatus they can use in a weight room um, you know with a, with a pad and a, and a spring loaded device that allows players to punch and use their hands and you know make sure that they're inside and they're tight. Dr. Gibby, and how quickly did he earn it? Quickly. You know what I mean? He's smart. He answered all the questions, and you know, he said, Coach, I, I'm, I wasn't in pre-med. I said, I know. It's a joke. <laughs> you, uh, you had mentioned Nicholas earlier. How do you think he's progressing this camp as well? Good. Good. I mean, he's over there competing and, um, you know, doing some things well, some things, you know, that he needs to correct and, you know, see for a uh, second or third time and, you know. I know he's working hard. He's been out there every day. He's been grinding and pushing through like a lot of these guys. Coach, Racy McMath is a guy who seems to have taken some steps forward this year. Um, do you see him as a guy that could be a true vertical threat for this offense, something that they struggled to find a guy to do last year? Um, yeah, I mean, Racy's working hard. He's having some good days. He's, he's caught some balls down the field for us and you know, certainly just want to try to create X plays wherever we can whether it's a catch and run or being able to throw the ball downfield. But, you know, he's a, he's a developing and, and he's certainly a, an improving player.